Good morning. My name is Charles Pussum. I'm the moderator of the Rollinsburg Town Meeting. I call the 27, 2017 Town Meeting to order. I've invited Joe Cowett, uh, who is a veteran and a long-serving town moderator, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. He's going to lead us uh, from his seat. So please rise and join us in this Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Joe. Welcome. Uh, I'm sorry? Turn it up. All right. This better. You can hear me now. Okay, uh, and we can we can add volume in there. But I don't want to get to that. Um, thank you all for coming to town meeting. Um, uh, if you're still waiting in line, sign in. Thank you for your patience. Thank you everyone for the uh, patience and as uh, as we got underway this morning. We have 23 word articles, I believe, today, and it's important to get to the business of the meeting. Uh, but I want to share a few words with you about moderator's rules and some of the special things coming up today because uh, it's my first town meeting as your uh, town meeting moderator. And this particular meeting may be a little bit different from other town meetings that you've attended. There are a few copies, about 25 copies of the moderator's rules floating around in the auditorium. Please share them. Please don't hesitate to approach me uh, during a break uh, with a question or to ask somebody to share a copy of the uh, moderator's rules. The most important rule, and this is why I didn't prepare a lot more copies, is that this body is a legislative body. It can overrule any rule or any ruling uh, that I make as your moderator uh, by majority vote. All you have to do is rise and say, uh, I move that the bot that we reconsider the ruling uh, that the uh, moderator has made. Um, occasionally, town council may uh, uh, advise us that we have to do things in a certain way or they won't, uh, they won't be valid. Uh, and we'll, uh, uh, we'll follow those statutory limits, I assume. Um, each one of you is a legislator for the town. It's a rare privilege uh, in the world uh, that, that individual voters get to be uh, legislators in this way. Uh, my hope uh, is that in the rules that I've uh, developed in the way that I run the meeting, you feel that this is a productive use of your time uh, and that you feel glad that you're part of uh, this process. Uh, when we get to each word article, I'll ask the question, uh, will anyone move to open debate on Article X? Um, a voter will identify themselves uh, and say, I move to open debate on Article X. Um, and another voter will identify themselves and say, I second that. Uh, the warrant article will then be open for discussion, debate, questions, amendment, and ultimately a vote. I'm not going to read the article myself in the interest of time, um, like many moderators do, but I will ask a member of the select board to introduce the article to you and they may read it. I believe they're also going to display the written text of the article uh, on, the, uh, on the screen that's over here to my left, your right. Now here's the, here's the part that's a little bit different. Articles 4, 5, and 6 ask voters to approve the issuing of bonds which is a kind of a long-term financial obligation of the town. There are some fairly strict legal requirements for how this body votes on a bond, so I'm going to ask you to listen. I'm going to, um, I'm going to try to explain the procedure so that we can avoid confusion down the road. We'll open debate on Article 4. When debate is concluded, I'll recess the meeting uh, so that we can begin <coughs> voting. You'll go back to the supervisors of the checklist, um, you'll show your card, say your name, and receive a colored ballot. The ballot for each warrant article uh, will be placed in the ballot box that has the same uh, color over here. I was asked if the ballots, uh, ballot boxes are going to be locked, and I said no. Um, I have uh, eight tellers this morning. There will be four <coughs> tellers placed near the ballot box, uh, and uh, the Rollinsford police have indicated that they're willing to stand by the ballot box, so I believe that the presence of an armed police officer is at least as good as a lot. The ballot um, 
Uh, as soon as everyone or nearly everyone in the hall has voted, I'll call the meeting back to order. In other words, we're not going to be deliberating other word articles while you're standing in line to vote. Um, but we also, we, we have to leave the, um, uh, the balloting open for an hour by statute. Um, and so to try to make a little better use of your time, once people in the hall have voted, we'll leave the polls open, we'll come back, I'll reconvene the meeting, we'll carry on with articles uh, five uh, and then six and so forth. Uh, but we'll continue to leave, leave the, um, that the polls open. Um, the team of four tellers uh, will stay with the ballots. Um, once the uh, time period, once the hour has elapsed, they'll open that box, count that box, and then they'll report their, um, uh, their, their, their count, they'll verify their count, and they'll report it to us. Um, this is a procedure that I developed uh, uh, with thanks here to the Budget Committee, uh, who alerted me to possible concerns about how this balloting would occur. I conferred with the Select Board and the Hampshire Municipal Association. I believe they conferred with Bond Council, so we believe that this is a good process. Uh, and just to make our lives a little more interesting, we're also legally required to have a secret paper ballot on Article 20. Uh, you'll check in again with supervisors at the checklist, and they will have ballots for you on that item. Um, but we don't have to keep that um, ballot open for an hour. To speak, in favor or in opposition to a warrant article, please line up at this microphone here. Um, uh, in other meetings, people have been very, very courteous about not crowding the person who's uh, speaking at the microphone, and I appreciate that. Uh, but don't uh, don't feel uh, ashamed or embarrassed to be lined up um, to uh, to speak so that you can keep moving orderly. Please always begin by speaking your name and address so that our um, recording secretary Jeanette Gagney. Uh, can uh, get your name into the minutes that are the official record of this uh, meeting. I'll recognize you um, uh, uh, when you're at the microphone, and I'll also often recognize members of the select board or members of the budget committee because they have special expertise on each and every warrant article, uh, and I believe it will be helpful and informative uh, for you to hear from them multiple times. If you feel that I have used that, um, uh, don't hesitate to let me know, particularly in break or after the meeting, but also during the meeting if you think that I'm uh, abusing that, that privilege. To ask for information, often a voter wants to know, gee, um, how does this budget line relate to that budget line, and didn't we um, have a different amount uh, set up for this um, uh, item originally? Um, just look at me and say, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to know why budget line 35 has $10 in it and not $12. And then I'll look to either um, select uh, Board Heward or uh, the uh, uh, Chair of the Budget Committee, Mr. Crozier, uh, and ask them to respond to that question. This is where it gets a little tough for us, uh, for everyone, because in normal conversation, we often think we know the rest of the answer, but we don't listen to the complete answer. So we get a clear record so that we avoid kind of uh, mutual crosstalk. I'm going to ask that you not uh, that you listen to the whole answer uh, and then ask a follow-up question if you have one. I may caution the select board and the budget 